Um, so we're going to talk about finding your riz. Your riz, as you may know, it's a slang word. It originally comes from the word charisma. Your riz is your style. It's your spark. It's your charm. You will use your riz in almost everything you do. You can meet somebody professionally in an interview, when you're making a new friend, whatever it may be. Um, if you don't feel like you know what it is yet, that's okay. I feel like I'm still trying to find mine. You will learn it over time. Um, I really think that it's important that we note that creating connections, this theme of the entire TEDx conference, it's not just professional connections, right? It, it's personal also. And in your lifetime, personal may become professional and professional may become personal. So um, finding your Riz is important for a multitude of different reasons, like I mentioned, uh, you know, interviewing, college apps, but also an elevator speech. Um, I know Catalina has started to introduce this concept to you all. When I was in high school, I thought it was a very daunting concept, but unfortunately, you do use it a lot. Um, I use it very often, and over time, especially when you're in college, you, I promise, will gain that confidence to figure out what your Riz is. So. I want to prove to you all that through your connections, you can become successful, no matter who you are or what adversity you feel like you may face. Okay, we're going to go to the next slide. So um, to step back a little bit, I want to talk about me in high school. So this is me in high school. Um, I played volleyball for all four years. I was even tech crew for the pajama game my senior year. I was the, the curtain puller. It was the most important job out of the entire show. Um, and I had a great time doing it. Um, I think it's really important for me to note that when it came to my academics, I never excelled in academics. Um, and I knew that since a young age and I had to work with that. I'll give you a few examples. I never took an AP my entire high school career. I was on, on honor roll maybe twice. I um, was the trendsetter when it came to the student going to the parent-teacher conference meetings. I remember sitting in the upstairs room in the library before they remodeled and sitting with all of my teachers and my parents and talking about my learning difference and what could help me in the classroom, what, how I could help the teachers in the classroom, vice versa, it was a partnership. Um, I took Chinese with Mrs. Covington for five years. There's her and I on the screen. We love Mrs. Covington. Um, I took Chinese with her for five years. I started in eighth grade when I was in Catalina at middle school. And when I decided to take Chinese, my family and I were advised that I should not take the language, that I wasn't going to grasp it quickly enough, that it was going to take my time um, away from my other studies. I ended up taking it from eighth grade year to senior year in high school, and then I went on to college and minored in it. So um, that was a little bit of my high school experience. I absolutely love Catalina, and it is true. If one of the most thing, one of the proudest things I know that I accomplished was being a lifer at Catalina. You guys will forever be my favorite audience for the rest of my life. If I could give back to anybody, it's the girls here. So um, no matter if you find your studies kind of difficult, kind of easy, really difficult, really easy, no matter what it is, all of the stories and tips that I'm gonna share with you all today, um, you can all take them and you know, spurs them out throughout your life and learn from them. So, let's see. Um, I wanna talk about me in college a little bit. When I was a freshman in college, I received a invitation to a uh, speaking engagement at my hospitality school at Cal Poly Pomona. And at that speaking engagement was going to be a catering company. I'm not sure if you've heard of them, but the catering company is Bon Appetit. So I'm putting two and two together, and the founder and CEO were going to be speaking at this conference, and I knew I had to go network with them. If anything, I should just go thank them for feeding me for 14 years of my life. Um, so I attended the speaking engagement. Afterwards, I waited and I spoke to them, and I said, um, Hi, my name is Lucy. I'm from Monterey, California, and I went to Santa Catalina. Their jaws dropped, and they said, you know Sister Claire? <laughs> that was the first thing they said. And so I was like, yes, I know Sister Claire. We love Sister Claire. And so we talked about Sister Claire for a little bit. Um, and then it was interesting because I could tell every other student in that room no longer held as much importance as I did to them not because I was a rock star, it's just because I had made a connection with them. We had a similarity between us. 
right? Um, my number one tip for anybody going to college, which is all of you, is you will put in, put in what your college experience, what you want to get out. If you put effort in, I promise you that your university, your clubs and organizations, your classes, your grades will show it to you back. Um, I, Cal Poly Buona is not known to be a University of Oregon, a University of Florida, a UCLA where it's like camaraderie, camaraderie. When I tell you I had the best time in college, it's true, and it's because of the effort I put into it. I signed up for clubs, organizations, I, I did it all. That is my number one tip to anybody going to college. Sign up for everything. The word networking and connecting can be a little daunting, and, and I get that. Think about it like this. I just want you to make friends everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. I want you to make friends for the rest of your life. Make friends. You have no idea what those people could bring to your life. So I want to tell you, um, this was my first connecting aha moment. I want to tell you another one. My sophomore to junior year um, of summer break, I was home in Monterey. I was working at Carmel Valley Ranch. I came home one day and my friend had texted me. I knew him through Greek life. He was the student body president. He had texted me and was like, hey, you know, I'm in town at a leadership conference with Leon Panetta. Let's get ice cream tonight. Remember, I remember coming home to my parents and I was like, I'm so tired, I don't wanna go to ice cream. And they were like, just go. You never know what's gonna happen, just go, just for a little bit. I was like, okay. I come back from ice cream, I walk in the door and I guess I had this like weird look on my face. And my dad said, he's like, what's wrong? Like, how did it go, was it fun? And I was like, yeah, no. It, um, he asked me a weird question or he told me he wants me to be student body president next. I was vice president of my sorority at the time. I was prepping to run for president of my sorority. So to hear the word student government was crazy to me. I took my junior year to think about it. Um, March 13th of 2020 was the last day of our in-person classes until our university got flipped on its head and became virtual. Um, that was also the day that I was elected as student body president. It was a whirlwind. That is my vice president. He is one of the best people I know and have ever had the pleasure of meeting. Um, we had a very, thankfully, successful administration because of our connection together and our connection with the student body. When you meet people, I want you to take the skills that Catalina has already taught you to be confident young women and speak with a good posture and a good voice. But you have to remember, you also have to be genuine and transparent in your conversations. These people meeting you also want to meet the real you. Right? They want to see what, what is your spark, what is your riz. Show them that. And I promise you will cultivate that skill more and more over time. So what did we learn from this story? We learned always say yes to ice cream. Um, seriously though, you always say yes to everything. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've almost not go, gone to X event because I'm tired, I'm run down, I have blank tomorrow, whatever it is. Go, you never know what could happen. This is the first story that I was really able to find my Riz. I can say now that at 21 years old, I led 30,000 students through a pandemic, and I can say that I managed and allocated a budget of $30 million at 21 years old. And again, this was the kid that never took an AP, that made honor roll maybe twice, that was told not to take Chinese. I promise you that you can all do it, especially through your connections. It is my belief that your degree in college is as important as your connections. You should not have one without the other. You have to have both. Okay, so next I wanna tell you about year and a half after graduation, um, I was invited to a celebratory dinner for a friend that had just given a, a TED talk actually. I'm sitting at the dinner, I get up at some point to use the restroom, I come out of the stall, I'm washing my hands and there's a lady next to me. We start talking beginning of the conversation, it's the whole, you know, what do you do? Oh, this is what I do. We're maybe 60 seconds into our conversation. She tells me she works for Lucasfilm, and I'm putting together, oh, Lucasfilm, Star Wars, Disney, whoa, that's awesome, oh my gosh, how, how is that job? She said, you know, the president of Lucasfilm is hiring an assistant, I think you should apply. I wish I could have drawn like a cartoon as to what was going on in my head because I was like, no, what, really? Like, I just didn't know what to say. She, she said, take my card, text me your resume. 
I texted her my resume the next morning. One of the VPs called me, asked me to come in for an interview. And about a month later, I ended up getting a job working for Kathleen Kennedy in Lucasfilm. Um, what do we learn from this story? Always say yes, again, and you never know who you're gonna meet, even in a bathroom. I'm, I'm not kidding, like the amount of times my life has shown me, you have to be ready to go, and again, I bring up the fact that take the skills that Catalina has taught you of being these confident young women and be ready to go anywhere. You could be meeting your maid of honor in the bathroom, you could be meeting your next boss in the bathroom, you could be like so many different people. So I wanna tell you a little bit as to what I'm doing right now. Um, as Kendall mentioned, I'm working for the president of CBS News, and a few weeks ago, he looked at me and he said, you know, I know it wasn't in your original job description, but in 24 hours from now, I have to host a town hall. Will you co-host it with me? <laughs> was, I, was I nervous? Yeah, I was freaking out a little bit. Did I say yes? Of course I did. So 24 hours later, I was able to be um, on air and we live streamed this town hall out to all of our employees at CBS News. Um, we had a great time and that all happened because of my connection with my boss. It's really important that when you make these connections, you can't just say, oh, I met this person and then in five years from now, you know, they're gonna write me a recommendation for college and it'll be great. Mm -mm. You have to cultivate the relationship, right? Once you meet somebody, you can't just say bye to them and you know text them two years later, hey girl, what's up, right? You, you need to continue to work on that relationship just like you do with your friends, just like you do with your family, right? Um, you have to continue to work on them, right? Make them stronger over time, so on and so forth. Now I wanna share a little bit more of a fun story with you all because I live in Los Angeles and when you live in Los Angeles, you do come across a celebrity once in a while. So, fun story about connecting. Um, a few weeks ago, I was at work, and we were interviewing on TV Dylan Sprouse. So, if you don't know off the top of your head who Dylan Sprouse is, he's one of the twins from Sweet Life and Zach and Cody. Um, I ended up meeting him. We took a picture together. He was very nice. And I had mentioned to him, were you at that fashion event a few weeks ago? And he's like, oh, yeah, the Louis Vuitton one. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw you there. I was there. You know what he said to me? He said, why didn't you come up and say hello? I didn't know what to say. I had no comeback. I had nothing to say. I just looked down. I was like, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, I should have come up and said hi. We finished our conversation. A few weeks later, I got to go to the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. I land back in Los Angeles early Monday morning, and I'm going walking to my Uber, and there's a long line of people waiting for their Uber taxis, so on and so forth. And I do a double take. It's Dylan Sprouse. So I said, Dylan? I was like, it's Lucy. We met at the CBS studio a few weeks ago. He was like, oh my God, hey, yeah, what's going on? We sat and we talked about how his uh, experience was at the Super Bowl, how I saw Usher right after his halftime performance, rollerblading, it was, I'll show you the video later. It was a great time. It was a great time. You never know who you're gonna meet, I promise you. And the connecting starts today when you're in college. I'm not kidding, whether you're going to the bathroom, whether somebody invites you to ice cream, be ready to go at any point. Um, okay, so I wanna talk about my four tips that I am constantly thinking about when connecting with people. First one, you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. I know it can be a little daunting. I promise it will get easier with time. Do it. I feel like I was never nervous to push myself, myself out of my comfort zone when it came to connecting because I knew that my life and my career could depend on this, right? Never be afraid to do it, it will get easier with time. Number two, the power suit. Like I was mentioning, the outfit, fashion, I'm a big fan. I want you to go into networking, connecting, meeting somebody with something that you feel confident in. Whether that's a color, a certain hairstyle, pants, skirt, dress, whatever it is, find what your power suit is. I promise you that your shoulders will get back, push, pu push back, your voice will become more confident, it'll all be all streamlined. Um, something else, I probably think about number three the most often, your one shot. If you're in a room with somebody and you are dying to meet them, but you're a little nervous and you don't really know, think about it like this. It's your one shot to meet them. That may be the last time that you are ever in that room with that person. Why not go for it? They may look at you and say, hey, you know, I've been wanting to hire somebody. It sounds like you'd fit the bill. You wanna come work for me? 
Maybe, you know, it, it's your new best friend. You never know. Go up and say hi to that person. Number four, find a similarity, just like I did with Bon Appetit, right? You can do this before you meet somebody while you're preparing to network with somebody and say, oh, you know, you're from NorCal. I went to high school in Northern California. You majored in engineering. I majored in engineering. Find a similarity to talk about. If you're ever nervous to speak to somebody, let them talk, right? Don't ask yes or no questions. No more, do you like your job? No, we're gonna ask them things like, Tell me about a time when you were 20 years old and you figured out what you want to do for the rest of your life. Ask them, what is one thing that you regret in your career that you think about often? You can ask them open-ended questions. Um, now, I want to talk about four tips for my introverts. I understand that not all of us go into a room and are just ready to go, ready to get after it. It can take a lot out of us sometimes, and that is completely OK. First of all, what's your why? What is the ultimate goal? Are you there to land an internship? Are you there to make a career shift? Are you there to schmooze with a college recruiter? What's the goal? Also think about your game plan. When you're in there, are you gonna tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna be there for 45 minutes and then I can leave? Or is it, I need to get three people's business cards and then I can leave? Whatever it is, come up with a plan. You'll be more confident going in, I promise. Number two, networking one-on-one. -on -one. Zoom has become a huge thing in our lives. Take advantage of it. Or instead of networking in a conference of 300 people, look at somebody and say, hey, I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee. Can we go out and get coffee sometime? Take advantage of it. You don't have to network in a huge room of all these people. I get it. Number three, um, find a networking partner. This is perfect for high school and college. If you're a little nervous to talk to somebody, bring somebody with you. You can even tell them, you don't have to say anything. Just stand there. It'll give me confidence, right? Um, number four, charge your batteries. I understand that, like I said, it can take a lot out of us to do this, but we're gonna have to con continue to do it for the rest of our lives. Before you go in to, let's say, a conference, an event, whatever it may be, you need to charge yourself up. If that means taking a walk around the block, if that means sitting in your dorm room with your blinds closed and meditating, or for me, it's watching a little bit of Disney Plus. I watched Cinderella before I came. Um, and when you go in there, you will, I want you to be fully charged and ready to go and ready to attack the situation. Um, when you're done, reward yourself. Get yourself a Starbucks, do whatever. Create a routine for yourself because unfortunately, connecting isn't going anywhere. So create a routine for yourself so that way the next time you have to do this, you know what to do, you know what works for you. It's just like studying, right? Those are my four tips for my introverts. So last thing. You will find your passion, I promise you. If you as high schoolers feel like you don't know what you wanna do with your life yet, what you wanna study, what career you wanna go to, that's okay. I talk to my sister Cecilia about this all the time. All you know is Catalina and your family and where you grew up. You guys are 18 and below, that's okay that you don't know yet. You have so much life to live. You have so many connections that are coming your way that you don't even know about. If you feel like you don't know what you want to do yet, that's just because you haven't talked to enough people. You haven't connected with as many people, and you will, and it's okay. I think that it's important to mention that you have to find your passion, and you have to find your goals, and you have to go find your riz. Without successful connections, to, ha to have successful connections, you first have to have a good connection with your family, your friends, and yourself. Thank you.